In this video, I will show you how to get started using ClipChamp on Windows computers to do video editing. Let's get started. So here I am on my Windows desktop and I'm going to go down here to the taskbar and click on the magnifying glass, the search button. Now, if you don't see that there, you can go to the start button and do a search there as well. Either way, just do a search for ClipChamp and ClipChamp comes pre-installed now on Windows 11 devices. If you have an earlier version of Windows, you may already still have ClipChamp installed. But if you don't, you could just do a search on Google or Bing. Just do a search for ClipChamp and there's a web page where you can download it. Now, once you open ClipChamp, it's going to ask you what kind of videos you're going to be making. In my case, I'm going to make an education video. So I click on education and I'll pick school and it gets me to the main ClipChamp interface. Now, you'll notice this is the completely free version of ClipChamp. It is possible to upgrade and get even better features, but what I'll be showing are the free features in ClipChamp. So here I have a couple of different options. And if there's a lot of interest in this video, I may eventually show some of these other options. But for now, I'm just going to click create a new video and it takes me to the ClipChamp video editing interface. So here we have the screen where the video footage will be shown as I edit. Here we have a timeline. Right now it's blank. We have some tools here at the left and we will have some tools at the right as well. Here I can import some media and that's pretty important. It is possible to also just click and drag and drop media here and it will be added to your project. If you're going to do that, you may want to go up here to the top and click and drag your project window to the side. Find the video elements and maybe audio clips that are on your computer and click and drag and drop them onto the timeline or into this box here. But in my case, I am old school. I prefer to just click import media and it took me right where I wanted to go. If it doesn't take you to where your video files or other files are, you may have to click through your folders here at the left to find the right one. But here are two videos that I would like to use in my ClipChamp video project. I'll just click and drag to select both. If you want, you can just click on one and open it, but I'll just do both at the same time. Click open and both of those video clips are being added into my project. Now they're here in the project window, but they're not actually in my film or my video yet. To get them there, I would need to either click and drag and drop them where I want them to be, or I can just put my mouse on one of the video clips and click add to timeline. Notice that because of how I did that, they're actually layered on top of each other. I don't want that. So I'm going to click and drag and drop this other clip after the first clip. Okay, so I've got my two video clips from the Grand Canyon. Now, what can I do to these clips now that they're in ClipChamp? Well, first, I'm going to go to the very beginning of my project. I'll just click here and notice that a playhead appears. I can click and drag this playhead anywhere in my project. And then when I get it to the right place, I can click play. And that's where the video will play or resume. So that's why it's called the playhead. For now, I'll put it all the way to the beginning and I would like to add some titles or text to the beginning of my video. There are a couple of ways I could do that. There's a little shortcut here. You can click add text. And when you do, you get some options here at the left. I'm just gonna use this one here. I can click and drag and drop it on the window here or down here on the timeline. So it gives me some text and now I can click on that text, maybe double click and type out my message. If I want to, I can click and drag to resize my text box here. I can also select the text and change the font size, whatever makes sense for my video project. Now here on the timeline, I can click and drag to adjust when my title appears. It could be right at the very beginning of the project, or it could be a little later on. I'm gonna have it toward the beginning. So let's watch what I have so far. I'll click play. You notice it quickly appeared, but after the video started, okay? And I can do that again. Now, as I'm listening to this and watching this, the sound from my video footage is bugging me a little bit. It was a windy day when we were in the Grand Canyon and you can hear that in the video clip. So I'm gonna click on that clip and go over here to the right. Notice that we have some tools here at the right that we can use. We can add some captions. We can change the audio. We can fade things. We can apply filters or effects or adjust colors. We can also speed up or slow down video clips. For now though, I'm just gonna click on audio and I'm gonna turn down the audio volume almost to zero. How about 4%? Now, when I resume the video at the beginning, 
Let's hear it. You can still hear a little bit of the wind, but it's much quieter. I might even go a little quieter than that, maybe at 1%. Now, while we're looking at the panel here at the right, let's take a look at the fade option that I have. I'm gonna click on the Grand Canyon title that I put here. And with that selected, I'm gonna go here and click fade. I want it to fade in and I want it to take a good half second and then fade out another half second. So with that selected and those changes made, I'm gonna go back with the playhead to the beginning and click play. So now my titles fade in dramatically a little bit and they fade out. Now I could also fade in and out my video clips. So I could click on the first clip, go to fade and apply a fade in and a fade out. That's fine to do. What else can I do? I can apply some filters. So the filters basically change the way the video looks. Now I wanna keep it the way it was, natural light. It looks amazing, it was a nice beautiful day. But if I wanted to, I could change it to a bold and blue filter. I could change it to vibrant vlogger or contrast, winter, any of these. There's so many to choose from, including some like sepia tones and black and white, just some really nice filters that we can apply but I'm gonna stick with none on the filters. We also have some effects. We can have the video rotate. I'm gonna click on rotate and you'll see what that does. Now I'll go back with the playhead to the beginning and click play. And there my video footage is rotating. I hope I don't get sick. And then I'll click stop. So you can see that there are some fun effects here to try out and I hope you will. I could also adjust colors. This is a little different than applying filters. I could add a whole bunch of more red by increasing the temperature or decreasing it. I could go to more blues. I could adjust the saturation, contrast, and more. And then speed of the clip. If I click on speed, I can speed this up quite a bit. Make it two times speed or four times speed. You'll notice what that does to the video clip. It now only takes up a little space on my timeline because I'm speeding it up to be faster. Okay, so those are some of the options we have here at the right. I hope you'll also check out closed captioning with AI. But let's look now here at the left. Let's say I choose to add more media to this project. Right now, I just have the first clip from the Grand Canyon and the second clip, and I have my titles. But if I want to add more media, I can just click on your media, import media, and I could look around my computer for maybe some audio files, music, things like that, or still images that I want to add to this project. And then once they're here, I could click and drag to drop them onto the project. Let's say it's an audio clip, Maybe it's music and I want it to play in the background. I could just overlay or overlap it on top of the video. I'm gonna delete that as an example, but you can import all sorts of media, either layer them or put them after or between or before the video clips. Now let's say I wanted to put it after my second Grand Canyon clip. How would I do that? It's not even fitting on the screen here. Well, I have some tools here in the lower right. This is a zoom out timeline. If I click the minus, it's like I'm zooming away so I can see more things on the screen. If I click this, it zooms in. These two buttons don't change anything about the footage or the final video. These are just view effects. Zoom in, zoom out. You can also click this to fit the timeline perfectly. And you can click this to collapse the timeline, which can be a little disconcerting, but don't worry. You can just click this button again to get the timeline back. Okay, in addition to your media, going there to add more media, we have record and create. So if you want to, while you're in ClipChamp, you can record new footage. Footage of just your camera, your webcam, or your computer screen, or if you want, just record some audio to add to your project. So this can be very handy to add voiceovers and other elements to your video project. A great feature you could also try is text-to-speech. So you can click there and choose a link language, choose a voice. You can click to hear that voice. Choose from a variety of voices to... And then click to type the text that you want to be spoken. The beautiful Grand Canyon. I'll click preview. The beautiful Grand Canyon. Save. And now I have a voiceover created by my computer by ClipChamp. I'm going to click and drag to put that where I want it to be on the timeline. And I'll move the playhead to the beginning. Let's hear it and watch. The beautiful Grand Canyon. So this is working out really well, and I can keep working and adding media that's on my computer or recording new media to build out my project. Now, one of the nice things about video editing programs like ClipChamp and others 
are that you can do some basic edits. Now, I've already done a few edits that you hopefully noticed, but let's look at a few others. I can click here on transitions, for example, to put in some transitions between different elements on my timeline. So I have my first clip of the Grand Canyon and my second clip. Between the two, I want there to be a video transition effect. So I'm going to click and drag this exchange 3D transition and drop it right between these two clips. Let's watch it. I'll click play. And here comes the transition. That's beautiful. Now let's say I want to try a different one. Here's another. Drag it there. Let's check this one out. Click play. I love that. And there are so many others that you can try out. So I hope you'll use some transitions in your video projects. It's a good idea to limit yourself to maybe one or two transition types per film project. You don't want to use every single trick that you have in your bag of tricks, just one or two maybe. We've already looked a little bit at text, but before I clicked on a little shortcut that was here. If you ever want to add text to your project at any time, just click on text. You can get a text box, a button, or any of these other types of text. And just click and choose add to timeline, and you've got more text that you can work with. Now there are other things to check out here at the left, other tools and features like templates. You can apply a specific template to your project. You can also go to the content library and put in shapes. This can be very helpful, especially if you want your text to be in front of a shape or a color. Now you'll notice it's not working out well for me here. That's because I have the circle on the top layer. I need it to be underneath my text. And so I clicked and dragged to scoot the circle to the side and I dragged my text to a higher level. And now my text will appear on top of the circle. There are many other content library items that you can add to your projects check them out. And when you're done, make sure you name your project. Go up here to the top left. It'll probably say untitled. I've already named mine Grand Canyon, but you could just change that and you're ready to now export your project. So I'm going to go here to the upper right and click on export. And I just get to decide what's the um, export quality that I want for this final video. I highly recommend the 1080p if that works for you. If you want even higher quality, you can go up to 4K. But in that case, you would need to upgrade your ClipChamp software. With the free version that comes pre-installed on Windows 11, you can export up to 1080p quality, which is high quality. So I'm going to go with that. I could save it to my OneDrive account. In this case, though, I'm just going to let it save to my computer. You can see it put it in my downloads folder. I can also just click save to your computer, downloads. It's already there, but that's how I could select a different location on my computer and click save. Notice that we have various other save options. You can upload it directly to YouTube, save it to Google Drive, etc. So I'm going to double click on the downloaded final version of this video project. And as you know, because you watch this. I wasn't very careful in my video editing, so it's not going to be perfect, but here we go. The beautiful Grand Canyon. Voice is maybe just a little creepy, but then the video continues. We've got the transition and the other elements that we added. So I hope that this helps you get started using ClipChamp. It's a great free option for video editing, and I think it's nice that it comes from Microsoft and again is pre installed on Windows 11. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.